What's up, guys? Welcome to Movie and Point is Flashback Reviews, where we take movies from the past, break them down, and tell you what we think about it. As always, if you like what you see, remember to rate, subscribe, check out the YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. Email in the polo 138 gmail.com if you have any questions. So it's part two of our M. Night Shyamalan superhero universe. We just did Unbreakable last week, and this week we're going to talk about Split. So Split is pretty basic. We have three girls played by Haley Lou Richardson, Anna Taylor Joy, and Jessica Sula. She, they have been kidnapped by this weird, creepy dude who's played by James McAvoy. They get trapped in the basement, and they are subject to James McAvoy's split personalities. And I think he has something like 20 or 30 split personalities. But the only ones we see in this are the young kid. We see the like motherly figure, and then we see the you know guy who has uh, OS, o OCD. And these are the three main James McAvoy personalities that we experience. And what happens is, you know, throughout the movie, the three girls are trying to escape and, you know, everything they do, you know, James McAvoy's character gets involved and keeps them from escaping, puts them in separate rooms. But as we're leading to the finale, we learn that there's this other character called the Beast, which is a monstrosity, a demon like, you know, person that just will rip people apart and will kill people and is very demonic. And so James McAvoy's character is his character a lot of times goes by Dennis, you know, so on and so forth. He goes to this, you know, psychiatrist who helps him try and, you know, fix his problem or try to understand why he is the way he is with his split personalities and so on and so forth. But then everything kind of collides onto his, itself and we get a pretty fun, pretty interesting, actually quite good, you know, horror film slash thriller you know, type of movie because everything that James McAvoy is doing is affecting everyone else. And he's a very scary person when he's in certain, you know, modes and they're creepy as hell. You know, it's just, you can see that this guy is unhinged, that he's not all there in the head. And it's just, it's an interesting character to watch. And I don't understand. I've, I said this to a bunch of people and I still don't understand to this day why James McAvoy didn't get nominated for an Oscar for this movie. He should have gotten nominated for all five Oscars for best supporting actor, or best actor. I joke, but I always joke about that, you know, because of his split personalities, but he is really good in this movie. I mean, he is fantastic. This is his career performance. And it's such a shame because James McAvoy is a fantastic actor to begin with. You know, he plays the young Charles Xavier and he's done all these movies, you know, going back to his early days when he, you know, growing up from Britain and whatnot. And it's just an incredible performance. It's incredible to watch what James McAvoy is doing, going from personality to personality and personality because it's so seamless. It's so unhinged. It's so amazing. It's just like, wow, this guy just knows what he's doing. And somehow he just didn't get the love he deserved, even though it was a great performance. And Anna Terrell Joy, who plays kind of the main girl in the group of these three girls, she is trying to find ways to escape, but she's kind of afraid because, you know, she doesn't want to be attacked by James McAvoy's character. And then stuff gets revealed in her past, which actually kind of affects how the story ends. And it's really disturbing. I don't really want to get into it, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But just as this movie rolls and just as it goes and just how moody it is, how atmospheric it is, how the fact that like 10 Cloverfield Lane, they kind of set this in one, you know, one place. And that place is a cellar or basement in this whatever place it's at. And how a movie works like this is you have to have the actors committed to what they're doing and they do a nice job. You know, Haley Lou Richardson and Jessica Sula. They are the scared girls. They're the ones that are the most frightened and they give a great performance, but it's Anna Taylor joy who really sells the frightening nature of what's going on. And she's a perfect foil to James McAvoy and a perfect idea of kind of a yin and yang of the two characters. But this is another movie that proves how good M night Shyamalan can be as a director. And I love how just, M. Night Shyamalan just knows his atmosphere. He knows how to play on people's emotions. He knows how to work people's emotions. And he just does a great job at it. And it's just amazing to see that he was able to just basically rebound from everything he has done in the past between Unbreakable and The Visit. 
is has come out with a classic monster movie. This is a monster movie, basically, and it's amazing to watch, and it's a great, fun thriller. And like I said, it's all bound on James McAvoy's character, and it's just it's fantastic how he plays that character out. Spoiler alert, we're going to get into spoilers. because If you haven't seen this movie, don't watch past this. Go, like, whatever. Um, so the thing that blew people's mind after watching this movie wasn't the movie itself. A lot of people didn't like this movie because they felt it was too conventional. They didn't think it was up to snuff. The thing that got everybody, the thing that blew everybody's mind was you finally get to the closing credits and you're in this diner. And I'm going to show the video as I'm talking about it. And these guys are talking about, you know, some things in the past. They're talking about the James McAvoy character. And then they're talking about the unbreakable character, Mr. Glass. And they're like, who is this character? Blah, blah, blah. And you see David Dunn, Bruce Willis' character from Unbreakable. And he's like, Mr. Glass. And that blew people blew people's mind because this movie is set in the Unbreakable universe. Like I said before, this is a origin story for uh, evil for a super villain. And that's fucking incredible. How this is it, like it destroyed people's logic of thinking because it was such a fantastic view, such a fantastic thing that everybody everybody wanted an unbreakable sequel for so long. And the fact that we got this and the fact that uh, Split was so successful, it, it was just amazing to see and that's why I'm so happy we're getting glass finally because just for the fact that you know, what Split was leading up to was something we weren't expecting. And that's what's awesome about it. And I I, I just, I can't wait to see Glass when it comes out. And I, it'll be probably my next review. But just, yeah, it just, it was, Split is just a fun, fantastic little horror thriller movie that I think everybody should watch. And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. So, so there you go. That's going to be my take on Split. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you like what you see, remember to rate, subscribe, check out the YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. Email nlapolo138 gmail.com if you have any questions. So, yeah. So now we've done Split. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments below what you enjoy about this movie if you have seen it. You know, I'm sorry if I spoiled it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but you should have seen it by now. Uh, before we actually end the video, I just kind of want to give you an update on where we're going in the future. Um, so next week, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. I think I might do like Flight of the Navigator, but it all depends on how everything works out because there might be an early screening of How to Train Your Dragon. If that's so, um, I'm definitely going to do those two movies because I love those movies so much. And then I'll get into How, you Dragon, how to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. And if everything plays out the way I think it should be, Sometime in February, I'm going to start doing two flashback reviews a week, and I'm going to take all the MCU movies from Iron Man to Infin Avengers Infinity War and do reviews for them. So you're going to get a couple of movies a week up until Avengers Endgame comes out. So that should be fun. That will give you a lot more content. I will definitely post one on Monday. I haven't decided if it's going to be Wednesday or Thursday that I'll post You know, the second video, but it's going to be in the week. So I just want to give you a heads up on the future of the flashback review. So, so thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.